Hey, this is Bobo, and you're listening to supposedly a paranormal guys. But I don't know about that. But listen to them anyways. Check it out. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The facts that will be presented are true. Scientists representing the world's foremost research centers took part in the examination of the evidence. The Jersey Devil. El Chupacabra. Psychokinesis. The Mothman. You are false. Spontaneous human combustion. Unsolved mysteries. I'm Chris. I'm Chad. And together, we're a pair Pair of normal normal guys. guys. Yippee skippy. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So, not, not quite exactly back on schedule, but... Pretty darn close. Close enough. I mean, good enough for what people are paying for this thing. That's right. Well, for us, this is like major. I I mean, yeah. Hard tack. I mean, you got to ease back into that almost year (laughs) vacation. Well, you know. Not really vacation. I don't want to stress my vocal cords, so I try to... It is true. Take it easy. Law. Mm-hmm. So. Yes. (laughs) So how's uh, how's the uh, couple weeks been for you, Chad? Yeah, they're they're a couple weeks. They were things going on. Yep, things and stuff and crap that nobody really cares about. So I won't talk about it. Fair enough. Yep. <laughs> uh, made it to and back from Michigan. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you run into a dog man up there? I did not. Oh. And yeah, I think you were right. I think it is Michigan. Michigan dog man. <clears throat> Where I had said it was Wisconsin. But- <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not saying there aren't any dogmen in Wisconsin. That's if they just... are, there's Packers. They're Packers fans. Are they? Yeah, they like cheese. They do. Oh, well, that's good. And meats, <laughs> cheese and meat sorts of summer sausagey meats, and a wonderful hot dish. Mm-hmm. Hot dish. Lots of hot dishes up north. Oh, true that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. hey. Uh huh. Get your chubs. Get some chubs and put them in your mouth there. Oh, we ate at this one restaurant when we were in Michigan, Chad, and Sarah mm-hmm. got a wonderful grilled walleye. Oh, did she? Oh, yeah. Mm. Lots of lake perch. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Fishy. Was. Mm. On a lighter note, I guess. Yeah. Uh, there have been no new methed up animal attacks or new methed up species of animal to report. Oh, well, that's, I mean, that's a plus. Maybe the I stickers guess. they're putting up are making Should a be. difference. Don't, yeah. don't. Flush your mm-hmm. meth. Don't meth your whatever. All right. Insert animal here. You know they should. Uh, they should consider that though. Like a couple different animals to maybe try that with, just to see. Like what would happen if you gave a sloth meth? I know what would happen if you gave a beaver meth. <laughs> what, Chad? Well, his teeth wouldn't grow any longer than they should, so he didn't have to gnaw them down all the time, and he would stop destroying trees. <laughs> okay. I expected much more from that, but okay. No, no. Meth beaver. So yeah, sloth. Meth sloth. Mm-hmm. Would it just be normal then? He would be he'd slow. Just be normal he'd just speed. be normal. Yeah. And you know, I think if uh, if they truly want to uh, figure out light speed, mm-hmm. give a hummingbird meth. I think it would just blow up or travel through time. <laughs> time traveling hummingbirds. A little trail well, of Well, all you got to do is give them some meth and send them like reverse against the uh, spin of the earth. Like Superman. There you go. It's all solved. And then they do that in Star Trek too. <sighs> they used the sun. Oh yeah. To they orbited the sun and catapulted bird yeah. of prey to They didn't do that. Blah, blah, if you go fast enough against the rotation of the earth, you yeah, can travel back in time a, and save get a, Lois. Get a whale. Yeah. <laughs> Spock can talk to whales, you know. He can. In his weird white robe. Mm-hmm. So anyway. <laughs> yes. 
And uh, also, Chad. Yes. The uh, all the hubbub about the storming of Area Fifty One is kind of kind of dying down a bit. Starting to calm a little bit. But have you have you noticed some of the other like storm this and storm that have came up? No. There's a uh, storm Loch Ness. Okay. Which I don't understand that one. Like Area Fifty One's on land. You can run to it. You could try to get to it and everything. What are you going to do to storm? Loch Ness, like everybody just gather around the ba- the banks. You know, there's only going to be one guy that go out there to get it if they get into a large group. He's going to be like, "Y'all know me. You know what I do. <laughs> you know, <I'm, laughs> you know what I do. Yeah, ten thousand dollars. I'll give you the whole thing: the head, the tail, <laughs> the whole thing, the whole Loch Ness monster. He's going to need a bigger boat. He might need a bigger boat. It's Loch Ness monster. Loch Ness, gosh darn monster. But even even if they showed up like everybody in scuba gear, I don't know if in scuba gear you can claim you're storming anything. I have, you don't, I don't really know. move too fast in scuba gear. I don't think too many people are going to be storming shit if they've been watching everything on the internet. Danny Trejo's too ba- busy to storm Area 51 because he's saving babies out of wrecked cars. That's right. So he doesn't have time. Machete kills, but not babies. Machete. And uh, I think it was a joke. Well, like the other ones weren't, but I think it was a joke. But somebody was like, "Storm uh, the Bermuda Triangle." <laughs> everybody just disappears. <laughs> Drive your boats, and everybody's gone. Yeah, kind of the same, uh, same uh, kind of results as Area Fifty One. If they want a realistic attempt, why don't they all just storm like a McDonald's at lunchtime <laughs> one day and watch everybody in there just quit? All right, because they'll be done at that point. They would be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be like when a tour bus comes in and they're like, fuck. But this will be like a whole big group of people, like just on a random day. Just show <laughs> just up. randomly show up. Yeah. Okay. I think you should put that out there. I think they should storm Mammoth Cave. Storm Mammoth Cave. Uh, <laughs> Dinosaur World. No, just Mammoth Cave. Just Mammoth Cave. Just Mammoth Cave, a camping area, and one guy shows up in a Bigfoot costume. All right. Then just all chaos ensues. Well, you know, you can do, you can do just like the guy that started that storm area fifty one. You can just put that out on the internet and see what happens, Chad. I'm just throwing it out there now. This will be on the internet. Okay. So I can, you know, what date are we going to do this? Uh, it's going to be on. Uh, let's see, mm. November thirty first. Sure. November thirty first. November thirty first. Storm Mammoth Cave. Storm Mammoth Cave. Now this is all on. The people that want to storm and I have nothing to do with it. I'm not going to be there, so. No, I mean, if you're going to storm it, you be there November 31st. Not me, personally. To storm that thing. Everybody else can storm it. They can dodge them bullets. They can see them. From Mammoth Cave. What are they hiding in Mammoth Cave? I don't know. It's a secret (laughs) government project in Mammoth Cave. Mammoths? Maybe. (gasps) Cryptid in a cave? Cryptid in a cave. I do too. Maybe it will make a comeback one day. It will. We need a T-shirt that just says "Cryptid in a cryptid Cave." In a cave. Paranormal guys. And what a uh, <clears throat> what cryptid uh, paranormal celebrity is hiding in the cave this week? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It might be Christopher Walken. Who knows? <laughs> really? Yeah, is he a par- is he a paranormal celebrity? He is. You know, Chad. Yeah, it's in the cave. <laughs> oh, but hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey. Before we forget this. Yep, yep, yep. There is new exciting uh, pair of normal guys uh, news. The hell you say. I do. Yeah. We uh, we have a hotline. We we do have a hotline. That's right. If you would like to call and talk to us and give us some stories, oh, stories. comments. Chad likes stories. Suggestions. Seems odd doing that at the beginning of the show. Foul language. Oh, <laughs> That's right. So uh, we're putting this out on the internet. So who knows what's going to happen? Five zero two two three zero seven six five six. Chris screens all the calls. I screen every one. He does, even though I don't have access to. Make it sure yet. they're savvy. <laughs> but yeah, hey, it's set up. Uh, give it a call. Say hey. Leave a story. Tell us something. Uh, we can record your uh, message. We can play it on the show. We can transcribe it. We can delete it. We can do all kinds of things. That's right. <laughs> we can do it all. 
It's just like being at King's Island. We have the technology. We can rebuild it. So that's uh, that's kind of a cool thing. Once nice. again, 502-230-7656. Remember, there's a $3,500 limit, and all the items must be in good, usable condition. Pong hotline. Wait a minute, that's Tradio. Oh. So, <laughs> anyway, moving on, Chad, to I guess if we were still doing the uh, kind of the bells and whistles version and we were going to make a couple announcements, it would sound something like this. The Pair Announcement Board. Uh, but since we're not doing that anymore. Yeah. What was that? I don't what was that? We have two new uh, Google account settings to update. Oh. Amazing. Okay, Google, where's Fred? So anyway. Uh we mentioned this uh <laughs> Siri? <laughs> no, that was Google. Google. <laughs> Um, but, uh, CryptidCon is, uh, coming up fast. It's, uh, going to be September 7th through the 8th at the Clarion Hotel and Conference Center in Lexington this year. Mm-hmm. Don't go to Frankfurt. It's in Lexington. Yeah. Don't go to Frankfurt. And, uh, some of the people that you can expect to, uh, meet and greet there. <gasps> Who? Nick Groth. Wow. Jeff Meldrum. <gasps> Bobo. Uh-oh. And his, uh, counterpart, Cliff Barrockman. Yes. Uh, mountain monsters are going to be there. Oh. I think it's the guys, not actual mountain monsters. Oh. Well, that's so still they're not going to bring down a Yeti or anything. Uh, well, that's sad. Uh, <laughs> David uh, Paulides. Yes. As long as he's not missing somewhere. Uh, Derek Hayes. Yeah. Which I've kind of like actually came to realize who he is now <laughs> through Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, he uh, does uh, the Monsters Among Us podcast. Yes. Which is uh, very good. And he is also one of the uh, members of uh, Cryptid Crate. Cryptid Crate, yes. that's right. Which uh, Cryptid Crate is awesome. They are awesome. You get all of your weird cryptid stuff in the mail every month. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> they listed this other guy, and I'm not really sure. It's Seth Breed Love. Breed Love? Breed, Lo- Breed Love. Breed Love, yes. Yeah, he's, he's there. A, he's an Italian director, I understand. Seth Breedlove. Yeah, he did a lot of those um, spaghetti westerns. It's me, Seth. Hey, what you talking about there? I'm making the movie about the Mothman. Mm-hmm. He goes. I think I think that was Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> oh well, six and one half dozen the other. Okay, but yeah, Seth. Uh, Seth's gonna make his uh, third appearance mm-hmm. there. He's uh, been at all the Crypticons, which. We were up until this year, but next year we're going to make a strong appearance. Are we? We're coming back with force. Come back hard, we huh? We are. Mm-hmm. And uh, this year, they uh, they have quite a few like really cool-looking vendors going to be there this year. Oh, yeah? Yeah, just... they just uh, they just posted them up uh, the other day, one after another on Instagram, and it looks like a pretty w- pretty nice little selection of little cryptid-related uh, items you can uh, go and look and potentially purchase. Awesome. So, that's awesome. So going down to CryptidCon, September 7th and 8th, 7th through the 8th, in Lexington there at the Clarion Hotel. Mm-hmm. And then Chad. Yes. Oh, and also, let us not forget about Factor Fiction Fest. That's actually going to be inside of a uh, horror, hound. horror hound convention. Yep. September 6th through the 8th um, at the Indiana Convention Center. Is that right? <laughs> is my writing that bad? Yeah, is it supposed to be Indianapolis? Because I think it's Indianapolis. Yes, Indiana Convention Center. Yes, in yeah, Indianapolis. Okay, it's in Indianapolis. <laughs> that's what I thought. And Bob Gimlin's going to be there. I think this is his last like big show appearance. Uh, Travis Walton, Lyle Blackburn, and George Sukalos. Because it's aliens. I'm not saying it's aliens. It's alien. But it's aliens. But it is alien. And uh, this is uh, helped uh, organized by our good friend Jeff Byers of, of Creature, Creature Replica. Replica. And Check I'll, out uh, CreatureReplica.com. Uh, Gene's going to be there with, some, uh, with a bunch of his stuff. That's right. Gene's gonna, they're going to have some prototypes. Some of his independent stuff he's for doing. Some, uh, yeah. Gene's got some stuff, and there's going to be some new wave of prototypes for right. uh, new Creature Replica figures. Yeah. He, I think what one was uh, the Alien Gray, and mm-hmm. then the Alien Gray with the uh, Hopkinsville Goblin uh, head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which looks pretty freaking cool. They are cool. All jeans. Not as really cool, cool as a couple other Hopkinsville goblins when I've seen, but <sighs> you <Yeah>. know. 
Hopkinsville Goblins, also known as the Jones Sisters. No, wait a minute. That's something different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hmm. Don't know where... Whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then uh, to add on and kind of make it not the pair announcement more, <laughs> there's a third one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention uh, the Mothman Festival. That's true. Going to be uh, September 21st and 22nd there in uh, Point Pleasant. Mm-hmm. Beautiful downtown Point Pleasant, West Virginia. That was our, um, that was our, like, first... Coming out party? Yeah, I think so. That's where we met Seth and, uh, Alexander Petikoff. Yeah. Petikoff. Pet- <laughs> that's Petikoff. Yeah, that's his name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a few other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's true. It's- and we went, we went on the, uh, bus tour. Yes. The frightening, dark bus tour. Fast, swervy bus down narrow <laughs> roads. Bus Sounded like a tour bus, just <laughs> schlopping down a road it barely fits on. <laughs> but uh, one of the things they're going to do there is uh, Seth is going to have Momo premiere. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's going to be actually Friday night, the 20th, at the State Theater there in uh, Point Pleasant. I think he's going to have some of those uh, one sheet size posters there too. I believe he? so. Yes, yeah. he. Uh, I think uh, he's doing two other kind of like whatever you want to call it um, sneak peek previews of it before then. Uh, one is at Cryptid Con. Yes. Uh, that's going to be the sixth, and then on the thirteenth, he's going to do one at the Canton Palace Theater in Canton, Ohio. And I believe, if I remember right, yeah, they're going to have some of those nice one sheet size Momo posters at all of those. Nice. So be, get yours and get it autographed. That's right. I think I think I do remember reading that they're all going to be autographed. Oh well, there you go. So if you want one without Seth's autograph, tough nuggies. That's right. You'll have to get some uh, lighter fluid. White out. Clean. No, use white lighter fluid. <laughs> white out. Just clean that right off there. White out. You can tell them it was a printing error. Uh-huh. No, it came like that. Some one person was really, really excited on this one poster. Oh. Oh, gross. Oh. Gross. Wow. So gross. Why would you even go there, Chris? Me. Oh, wait a minute. I said it. <laughs> um <laughs> I know everybody else gets us confused, but now you are. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So all kinds of interesting uh Tidbits. Paranormal events for you to enjoy in the month of September. Mm-hmm. Very exciting. I know I'm excited. Did you enjoy that? that last I drink? do enjoy a diet sun kissed orange. Ew. Stuff what? goes right to your brain. What does? That whatever they say. Aspartame? Out yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Brain tumor. Something's got to do you in. <laughs> Life. <laughs> well. Doesn't have to be aspartame. <laughs> Living. Other people. Breathing. <laughs> Get those fried green ultimatums. I long for the comfort that death will bring, Chad. <laughs> sweet, sweet and brave. <laughs> um, wow, that's a horrible segue into it, but on a uh, different note, um, Rosemary Ellen Guiley uh, passed away since our last show. She did. Yeah. Renowned author, um, just unexplained. Yeah. Well, big, big name in the I'm sure somebody knows, community. but last time I looked, it was just sudden, yeah. un- unknown why she passed away. Right. I think she was 69. Yeah, that's sad. It is. Yep. Mm-mm-mm. Very sad. After that somber note, mm-hmm. moving on. Uh, Chad. Yes. You know, there there's several things that I feel like we've kind of come to be known for. Really? Here on Paranormal Guys. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the hell you say. Okay. And even though last show you forgot to say it, occasionally you're appalled at my ignorance about Yeah, I'm, I'm often appalled at your you ignorance. Are, yeah. And I don't understand it, but hey, whatever. Um, I think another one is um, our horrible, horrible stereotype uh, accents. Yeah, which yeah, uh, have those. Which <laughs> leads me right into um, our first little story we're going to do tonight. Oh, yeah? In part of the, I'm going to do it. Oh, uh, okay. Peron News Story. Hey. <laughs> you have to do it, don't you? <laughs> I want to be included. Fine. 
fine. I don't do it when you say paranormal announcement board. But you can. But I don't. I respect yeah. you. Uh, I know better than that. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, first story up on the old uh, Paro News stories. Yeah. Chad, I think brings back one of the uh, times I almost uh, blew an O-ring laughing. <laughs> you do that a lot. Something about the Pope and corn and sewage <laughs> treatment plants or something. I don't know what you're talking about, Wendy. Oh, no. Here it comes. <laughs> so what do you got there, Chad? Well, we know this is from a reputable source because it comes from the uh, the Scottish Sun. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's a Scottish Sun. It is. <laughs> it is. It's Monster Find. The Loch Ness Monster was spotted on sonar swimming beneath the tourist boat. Uh-oh. In case you... Uh, what was he up to? Probably about 25 feet. Dun -dun. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so there was a Loch Ness boat captain, and he claims to have spotted Nessie on his ship's sonar. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mike Bell captured the remarkable image while he was taking a group of tourists for a trip on the famous lock on June 27th. Mm. Mm, they were out just tooling around. And then the sonar picked up a picture that shows the bottom of Loch Ness. Right. And a fish. And a long, thin object about 115 feet below the surface. Ooh. Now, they're like, holy guacamole. When the 24-year-old circled and took readings at the same spot, the object had disappeared. Now, hang on. <clears throat> yes. Would they have been like, holy guacamole? Or would they have been more like, holy haggis? <laughs> Probably holy haggis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. But it's all right. You can you can interject at any time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the object had disappeared, tending to rule out a log or other inanimate objects. Mike from nearby, <laughs> during the dark, <laughs> had just finished explaining the story of Loch Ness <laughs> and the castle on the water when a tourist spotted the anomaly on his sonar. <laughs> oh, man. The image shows the sonar device with 101 meters at the top left corner, indicating the total distance to the bottom at that point. On the right-hand side, the device is going down in increments of 20 meters. 20 meters. That's spelled M-E-T-R-E-S. What is that, roughly, because what, 60 feet? You know better than I would. Sure. 60. Yeah. We'll call it 60. Sure. They didn't really push that metric stuff no. when I was in school, except for like a week and nobody cared. Right. And in about uh, 15 meters or so, there's a big blip which says, hey, this might be a fish. <laughs> it's a fish. That's what it said. <laughs> yeah. However, at the 35 meter mark, there's a long zigzag line. I like those papers. It's thought that this is a very large object, which Mike believes could be Nessie. And it marks the eighth official sighting of the Loch Ness Monster this year. Mm. Mike said, I like to think this is a creature, Nessie. It's my first year being the skipper in this boat in five months, and I've never seen it or had something that big on the sonar. <laughs> my dad is the more experienced skipper who has been doing this for a few years, and he said he's never seen it that big before on the sonar. <laughs> it's my first sight in the Nessie, and I think my dad is a wee bit jealous as he has never seen it. <laughs> the standard size on the sonar is usually a sharp prick, <laughs> suggesting a small fish. <laughs> it's your fish, lad. The large line about 35 meters in the water was about 10 to 25 feet. An object of that size, I would think, is way too big for the normal species in the lock. It must have been about five or six minutes I spent trying to pick up this creature again. Last night, the RNLI issued a safety warning about a mass search for the Loch Ness Monster on September 21st, and it went viral on Facebook. On the site, 18,000 people said they are going to storm Loch Ness. Yay! <laughs> With 38,000 interested, the RNLI said the water is very deep. It has an average temperature of 6 Celsius. <laughs> Go for but it. But <laughs> is prone to deteriorating conditions with wave heights of 4 meters being recorded. It was reported last month that a couple caught Nessie while holidaying in the highlands. Gloria and Ian Davison saw a dark creature with a head and neck as they drove alongside Loch Ness. The stunned couple stopped a car by Urquhart Bay and watched the creature for a minute before it disappeared. Nessie was reported to have been seen 15 times in 2018, Chris. Research carried out last year revealed that the mythical creature is worth 
41 million pounds a year to the Scottish economy. Nice. The first encounter of the beast is said to have been encountered by the Irish missionary St. Columba in the River Ness in 565 A.D. He wore a trench coat. And he did. So there you go, Chris. Scottish adventures. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um... I saw something else that uh, on Loch Ness when I was looking for that one that they said that uh, the unnormally long spell of hot weather around Loch Ness is why they think they're having so many sightings this year. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why Ness, is that? Nessie's getting too warm and, I don't know. Out fanning? Yeah. Sometimes you got to let your sh- you know, just... <laughs> <laughs> just you, cool you, in the breeze. You, you've just given up on all like censorship now. Yeah, I don't care. You'll either fix it or you won't. True. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta let you <laughs> breathe. <laughs> wow. Uh, this is a family show, Chad. Is it? I mean, maybe. Mm. Well, I mean, Loch Ness monster had babies. <laughs> Did he? His family. <laughs> she. She had babies. Nessie. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Loch Ness monster. Mm-hmm. And uh. Moving right along, Chad. What, yes. Well, no, wait. Not uh-huh. moving right along. Did you? Uh, what? What? Did you see the picture on that story of the sonar? I did. Image? What do you think? I think it looks like a picture on a sonar. It's a big, it's like predator vision. Red and yellow blob. Mm-hmm. It's like, predator yeah, saw it. It could be. It could be Nessie. It might not. I don't know. <laughs> his corn kernel <laughs> He's got his. He looked at it with his sad little. Calling Colonel A's, and I just knew that like moment. A snack pack <laughs> I just knew that moment. I had to put him out his misery, so I stepped uh, on his wee head. <laughs> so, uh, keeping up with the uh, the big names in uh, cryptozoology, Chad. The do we? Oh yeah, we uh, we uh, we're moving right along to something that happened not too far from here. Uh oh, and not too long ago. Uh huh. Alleged Bigfoot sighting prompts gunfire at park. Holy crap. You're you're not whatever. I don't know what to say. <laughs> what? I'm I'm all worked up. Uh, Bigfoot shooting. You shocked? I wonder if Bigfoot was the one that fired the shots. I don't think so. <laughs> Bigfoot with a gun? Scary. <clears throat> I think I think that's the next movie that's coming out from the people that brought us Hobo with the shotgun. Bigfoot with a gun. <laughs> Bigfoot with a gun. Uh so this one comes from uh, Cave City, Kentucky, mm-hmm. down around Mammoth Cave, Dinosaur World. It's a big hole in the earth. Guntown Mountain. Guntown Mountain, it's open again. Um, federal officials are investigating a report that a man fired a gunshot while camping at Mammoth Cave National Park, an incident that another camper says was prompted by an alleged sighting of Bigfoot. The hell you say. Two in a show. Two, yeah. Mammoth Cave said law enforcement rangers responded early Sunday to a report of a person with a firearm at one of the Kentucky Park's backcountry campsites. Brad Ginn, or Jen, your pronunciation may vary, told news outlets he and his girlfriend were camping nearby and were awakened around 1 a.m. by a man with his son. Mm -hmm. The man said they were going to investigate strange noises he kept hearing. Ginn said he heard a gunshot minutes later and the man returned to say Bigfoot had emerged from the woods, so he fired. <laughs> Ginn said he and his girlfriend decided to leave and report the incident. Yeah. Good thinking. <laughs> the leaving part. Park spokeswoman Molly Schroer says an investigation continues and the park is safe to visit. Mm-hmm. Very short story. <laughs> They're near Jellystone. So, uh, there you go, Chad. Uh, Bigfoot. All I can say is, poor, poor Bigfoot. All he wanted was a sandwich. Hey, hey you gonna eat that? You gonna eat that sandwich? Because if you're not, I'm pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's running for his life. Holy! <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted the sandwich. Jacques Lafleur, he's trying to get him. <laughs> Harry. Mm-hmm. Poor Harry. So, so okay, Chad. Yes. You're not you're not the gun toting type. Mm, not yet. But let's say you were. Uh huh. You're camping. Mm-hmm. You're walking around. You see what you think is a Bigfoot. Is the first thing through your head shoot him? No. Not at all. Well, you it can... might not be Bigfoot. 
Uh, okay, so first thing, crap your pants. Then what's the next thing? Get out of the area. I don't know. I usually have a real bright flashlight if I'm anywhere that light could get dark. <laughs> blind so him for a minute. I want to blind him for a minute and see what it is. See if he rushes me. Today's so, Tom Sawyer, mean, mean stride. And then I just get out of there. Switch it up. With, what if it's a dog man? It's a dog man. You're dead. You're dead. There's no getting away from no, that. You, might, you just close your eyes and accept your fate. Mm-hmm. Just put your head between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> Make it quick, dog man. <laughs> Hi, my name's Al Poe. That's it. You're done. Slather yourself with T-bone. You might as well just strap bacon strips to your chest. <laughs> bacon <you> strips. <laughs> bacon. <laughs> but then he might just think you're his best friend, and just then he'd follow you around. Nah, he'd probably follow you around, but I don't think <laughs> stray dog man followed you home. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm waiting for the day somebody adopts that dog man puppy. From the pound? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they come in one day and it's up there working the microwave. Get, get a glass of water. How long do you put hot dog in for? <laughs> I don't know how long you cook hot dog. <laughs> dog man. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, well, there you have it. Yeah, that's it? Yeah. You're done? Hey, we're, uh, we're keeping them short and sweet for a while. Mm. Yep. So, uh, uh-huh. what do you think, Chad? I I think that Bigfoot getting shot at in Mammoth Cave is terrifying. So I kind of like Camp Mammoth Cave sometime, if I'm ever able. Uh, Loch Ness Monster Story, I mean, anything out of Scotland is always fun. It I'll is. Take I don't know why. I I'll, mean, I'll take that any day. <laughs> oh, good old Loch Ness. Mm-hmm. Can't beat the Loch Ness Monster. That's right. Uh huh. Nothing. I got oh. nothing. Uh, me neither. Yeah. It's been a long week. <laughs> Has it? It's <laughs> uh, been a long week. Hey, Chad, you know where you could go to forget all your worries and troubles for a while? Uh, Vegas. Maybe. Or. Or. Paranormalguys.com. There you go. Oh, okay. Paranormalguys.com. Uh huh. That's our uh, main Squeeze. hangout. Yeah. Uh, Post, put the show there. Mm-hmm. Updates. Yeah. We don't really update the site much you other than start, the shows. You start updating that site more. Utilize that. Well, um, oh, hey, 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 I forgot all about this. Uh, there will be an update to the site, hopefully, by the end of this weekend. Oh, yeah? What's that? If you're uh, playing at home, that would be like 10th and 11th or so, somewhere there. The weekend okay. of the 10th and 11th. Yeah, for that group. Um, we are going to start offering some nice little vinyl uh, decals mm-hmm. of various cryptids. Stickers? Stickers and uh, stuff. Everybody like stickers. So, I mean, at first, I think we're going to have maybe a selection of four or five up there. Mm-hmm. And if you are familiar with the shirts that we had at CryptidCon the past two years, they're going to be those designs plus one that we didn't make shirts of. Uh huh. So you'll have your Pope Lick Monster, your Kentucky Dog Man, your Sheep Squatch. Mm hmm. And the mystery one. Is it uh You'll have to go to paranormalguys.com and see, Chad. Oh, okay. I'll oh, check it out. Oh, the mystery. It is. So, yeah, hopefully by uh, the end this weekend sometime I'll have those up there. So, if you would like your very own uh, Paranormal Guys approved vinyl uh, decal mm-hmm. of a uh, cryptid, yeah. go ahead and check it out. It has your DNA all over it, doesn't it? I mean, maybe. Yeah. Fingerprints. Mm-hmm. Don't frame me for any... Uh, Incriminating. For any crimes if you get one. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have that up there. Okay. And potentially probably do some maybe shirts up there with those here. And, like, once we get that all squared shirts away. Shirts would be nice. Yeah. Right. So, there you go. Mm-hmm. There's that little nugget. That's pretty sweet. It is. Uh, so, yeah, keep uh, keep that on in mind. Uh, and I'm sure there will be some kind of little blurb on Facebook about it once those get yeah get up and going uh, you can also look for us on Instagram mm-hmm. we're pair o normal guys true on Instagram yeah. I think I, might I'm be pong sure podcast are. it's not pong it's something weird will come up I don't know <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah we throw stuff occasionally up there too that's mm-hmm. uh, another place where I like to uh, put up that we have a new show ready yeah and then the one that Chad updates with all kinds of interesting stories all of the time 
is uh, Facebook. Facebook, yep. And that's facebook.com slash pair o normal guys. For our older crowd. That's I right. like to keep that updated. And I need to get our YouTube uh, channel it updated. It needs to be updated, yes. And get that going. You know, I haven't checked that to see how many views it's had lately. I haven't either. We took Good that look. little week or two off. And uh, hey, Chad. Yes. If you happen to go to our Facebook page and you're checking stuff out, why not go on over to the Facebook page of one Mr. William Ignacio Blanchard. Ignacio. Yeah, I think that's his middle name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I read that somewhere, I think. He's the gentleman that does all of the uh, music for Pair O Normal Guys. Musical genius. He is. Mm-hmm. And uh, give him some love. He's got some stuff out there that uh, I think everybody likes. He did some, uh, here a while back, he did some uh, versions of like tubular bells and like a uh, phantasm yeah. theme. Yeah, he's got a real good cool phantasm like that. theme on there, yeah. Check him out. He's, he's really cool. He does a... Uh, he has an 80s tribute band called Pop Rocks. Yeah. Too. Yeah, I saw his uh, Corvette. Yeah, he got, got a new Corvette. Red. Yeah. Yeah. Like an 80-something Corvette. Mm-hmm. Like that, not quite a Stingray, but before they kind of took away the big fenders and everything. It's the, uh, what is it, the Dutch release of tracks. You know, the Transformer, the artwork on the back of the box, he's red. Okay. Yeah. Sure. We go them in these stunning red colors. They're great. <laughs> Raul, don't touch me. Wow. So there you go. Uh-huh. Chad's nerd talk for the show. Shut your face. No. Sorry. Boba Fett wasn't associated with a Corvette. What do you mean, Boba Fett? Boba Fett Corvette. Although you could say he was because the uh, the uh, uh-huh. the rebels uh-huh. used Corvettes. That was the name of the ships. You know, like the one Princess Leia was on when Darth Vader like uh, came aboard and like mm-hmm. kidnapped her? Mm-hmm. That was a Corvette. Mm-hmm. Did you know that one? Nerd. Did you know that one? No. No, but you could tell me what every head Corvair. of every boat, every Optimus Prime that ever existed was. I can't do that. That's not true. Anyway, we digress. Mm-hmm. Again. Yes. So yeah, William Blanchard, go show him some love. Mm-hmm. Tell him Paranormal Guy sent, him, sent you. Yeah, I'll tell him. Yeah, tell, yeah. Them, tell them that. Yep. Um, Cryptid Crate. Cryptid Crate. All, check out Cryptid Crate. They always have really cool stuff. They do. There's been yep. a few of the things that I've been like, oh. Check out Creature Replica. If they had a triple X shirt, I'd like that. They carry triple X shirts. Which, shirt. I'm, I'm out of a triple X now. They've got a Mongolian Deathworm triple X. But I think it's a tank top, isn't it? Ew. Well, it, it, means, mean, it means your like, arm fat like hangs out. I mean, if you have arm fat, I'm, these guns aren't fat. It's everything else. <laughs> anyway. Woo! Uh, so, uh, <laughs> sun's right out. Before I need guns a snorkel. Out, uh-huh. um, and so, yeah, Creature Replica. Mm-hmm. They're getting ready to bring some really cool new things out. Go check them out. Yep. And, Small Town uh, Monsters. Yeah. And uh, go see my, go check out my uh, buddy. He's got lots of toys and stuff. He's dealing with lots of monster stuff. Uh, Tyrant Toys and Collectibles on Facebook is Jason. Check out his stuff. He carries a lot of good monster horror themed things. Yes, he does. That, you know. And uh, just remember, there's uh, still that uh, pair of normal guys hotline out there that you can call and leave Chad some stories. Yep, well, call the hotline, and uh, there's a sculpture that's still up for sale too. If uh, anybody's really super interested, that uh, Chris sculpted. It's a one piece. One of a kind piece. One piece. It's not it's multiple not a bikini. pieces. Yeah, it's a one. It's a one of a kind piece. It's a sculpted. Insert your water monster here. Loch Ness <laughs> champ. Uh, he can be what you want him to he be. He can be. He's pretty cool. So uh, we have him up on eBay right now. You can go to the our Facebook page, and uh, the link is on there. It is. It is. And let me uh, announce the. Uh, Hotline numbers, and she cut me off there real quick. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. That's right. <laughs> Who uses paper anymore? 502-230-7656. Mm-hmm. Listen to our new menu options. <laughs> do. Please do. Do. Well, Chad, that wraps another one up. Mm-hmm. Still unscripted and awesome. Yeah. Except for the paper I just rattled around. Mm-hmm. I just needed that for the phone number. Yeah. You didn't... Um vape all over the place this time no i didn't did i no that's good i know makes me feel better about life and our equipment <laughs> does it uh-huh. well good i'm glad i can bring a little sunshine to your life Jack. call that a tiny comfort tiny comfort tiny comforts well good mm-hmm. so have a paro normal week
hey, 